So we are very lucky today to have with us um, one of my favorite meme celebrities, and it's uh, Rachel Linares. And let's see. So Rachel, I think I I think I got the the most recent interview here. So um, she's an IT experience lead uh, for continual service improvement. Oh, that that was the Lexmark. That's old. That's that Lexmark. <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right, Rachel, you're going to have to sort of help me out. So you used okay. to work at Lexmark. That's right. I used to work in Lexmark. I used to be an IT uh, user experience, but almost a year ago, I changed and went to an education startup that's called North Canyon Media, and I manage one of their research content production groups. So I focus on careers, um, creating research based on individual careers, and then managing the process of bringing that research into a uh, technologically accessible form <clears throat> for high schoolers. I can't say a lot specifically because our product launch isn't until August, uh, <laughs> but I'll be as uh, as general and as specific as I can. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great, Rachel. Well, thanks for doing this. And you know, Rachel, you know, maybe you can share with the folks here a little bit about your lean journey. Um, you know, I kind of ran into you when you were first, you know, working in Ventura as, as their sort of improvement manager for the county of Ventura, and we started together working on a, a black belt. And, and by the way, too, we've got a group of students here that are working at looking at my um, Lean Six Sigma green belt certification process, Good. which involves that sort of going back and forth that, that we've sort of done a couple of times now on, on different projects. Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about your lean journey. Yeah, definitely. So my lean journey started. I'm going to date myself, maybe about two decades ago, and I was working in higher education at the time. I was working at a private liberal arts college in Kentucky, and it was one of those places where their favorite phrase was, "Well, we've never done it that way before." And so I got in the habit of constantly looking at the processes we were using to talk with recruits, process applications, you know, review transcripts, all of that, and look for a better, more efficient way to do it that kept better communication with the students. Um, so that started me down my lean path without realizing it was a lean path. <laughs> I, I continued through there, eventually managed the entire admissions office there. Um, right about that time was when lean was starting to get big into healthcare. <clears throat> and so uh, a couple of friends were in the healthcare industry. So I <coughs> read some of their materials and started formalizing more of what I did in terms of actual lean Six Sigma type practices. I still you know, didn't go through a formal class myself. After that, I went to UCLA Anderson and I managed the admissions process for their executive education programs. So working with executives, boards of directors, um, you know, middle and upper management of companies for these uh, non degree certification type classes. Again, keeping an eye on how can we use new technology, how can we make the process more streamlined and efficient because these are working professionals that, that we're targeting, you know, and so they don't have a lot of time, we have to be clear concise and, and get the job done fast. After that, I went to CSU Channel Islands, and I was working there as the bursar. Uh, so I managed basically the bank and all the finances on campus. We worked hand in hand with admissions and financial aid, again, looking at better ways to keep transparency and keep students and everyone informed of the process, the right process along the way, and then try and improve the process from their standpoint to make sure that it was seamless for students and parents. And that was when I, I, I officially uh, got my green belt through the county of Ventura. There was a partnership between the university and the county. And so uh, university students were able to sit in on the county's green belt classes. So I, I finally officially got my green belt then. <laughs> And then after that, I enjoyed it so much, I was able to go to the county and work in the program that offered that training. The County of Ventura is, I mean, it's, it's just south of you guys, but it is really amazing how much they have infused Lean Six Sigma process improvement across the county, all agencies. You know, so everything from the harbor and the airports to human services and the healthcare system, the sheriff's office, 
uh, Board of Supervisors, everything in between. Um, I was teaching classes for Yellow Belt, uh, which is just basic knowledge of Lean Six Sigma, Green Belt, which is the facilitators. And then we also did a, a focus class on managers so that managers could get, um, it was like a mini class, but they could understand the principles and therefore support their employees while they were wanting to look at process improvement practices. Um, so I was there at the county for a while uh, and then thank, well, I guess thankfully good timing on my part. I moved to Kentucky February of 2020 right before the lockdown happened uh, and I took a job at Lexmark uh, in granted Lexmark is manufacturing printer manufacturing and then document management but I took a job in their IT department working with the user experience and infusing uh, more of a customer service type process to their IT processes. So again, looking at those IT processes from the customer perspective, thinking about the bottlenecks, you know, the uncertainty, where are we asking questions that they have no idea what to answer. So they just put, you know, gobbledygook in the in the answer. And then we have to go through the process of figuring out what they really meant, wasting time, all of that. Um, so I was there for about a year. And then this startup, North Canyon Media, um, well, I, I started working for them freelancing as a researcher and then was hired on full time to manage one division of, of their research and content production. So that's kind of my lean journey. While I was at the county, I started the black belt, uh, the black belt training and I'm almost there. I just need to <laughs> finally document two, two okay. projects, which is, is harder than you would think at a startup. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we, yeah, we can, we, you know, you, you know, I always welcome a conversation about that because I've really enjoyed working with you over, over the years now, right? You know, yes, sort over of a, the years, <laughs> over the years is, is how it's gone. So, so, so Rachel, I think, you know, for, you know, where the, this is the, um, you know, at the end of the MBA class. Um, so it's lean operations management. So these guys are, are pretty well exposed to a lot of the, the concepts in lean at this point. And we're wrapping up the quarter talking about change management and, and lean transformation sort of in general. You've sort of seen, you know, multiple sort of organizations where you've either sort of, you know, parachuted in or, or right now you're kind of in a, in a startup sort of environment. Do you have any uh, words of, of wisdom for folks that are sort of working, you know, to try to get organizations to adopt some of these things, what would, what would you say? You have to be persistent because I, I, as you mentioned, I've had the benefit of working both at institution or organizations that are starting their lean journey. Like at the county, the program had been around for at least 10 years before I got there. So it had good traction. Uh, and here at a startup, you know, it's it's pretty chaotic and nobody else really knows about lean or Six Sigma. So when you're looking to start infusing this in your day-to-day -day work and at your organization, it will be a hard battle because people don't understand it. They think that it's focused on manufacturing. They think, well, as a services organization, how can, we don't need lean. We don't have to worry about producing widgets faster or more effective yes but everybody has customers right, and right. so you're going to face some opposition but just being persistent taking small steps you know, the program you're not going to be able to infuse it overnight but if you start looking at this process or this process and then you start to gain some traction you need to start working with your department your manager taking those small steps is going to build and it's going to give you the momentum that you need to be more prolific in your activities throughout your entire organization. Um, and <coughs> excuse me, that just in time training is a pretty awesome thing. Because if you can, let's say you improve whatever process you're working on, you highlight it to your supervisor and you say, look, here's the here's the little tool that I used to make this possible to make this change possible. And that goes a long way because then they can see the direct results in your organization and they can have the tool themselves to hopefully <laughs> look through learn and then maybe even implement within whatever they're doing so it can be a hard battle but don't give up and just take it one step at a time and make that continuous that continuous improvement i i, I really like that idea of, of, of the small steps. But the other thing I, I sort of hadn't re really sort of realized, and I think this applies to the projects that the MBA students are doing is, 
not only are we expecting them to maybe analyze, identify, and point out you know, changes or help the organization deliver changes, but also highlighting the tools that they've used to come up with those things. Because it, it, it might not be the particular change that they're working on, but if they show them a failure modes effects analysis or a value stream mapping approach or an A3 problem solving, you know, maybe that's where the light bulbs go off and, and sort of help the organization. Well, because then it's not a mystery to them. If you just come to them and you say, oh, well, I improved this process and here are my results, there's always the question of, well, how did you really do it? So by sharing the tool with them, you give them that inside, that inside view, and you're you know, surreptitiously teaching them <laughs> so that you can give yeah. them that tool to use later on. A great example of this is, um, <clears throat> so my, my team is about six researchers, four writers, I've got a project manager, um, and hopefully soon I'll have a, a, a second, like a, an assistant researcher to me. And we sat down as a group, oh, and, and a couple of editors that I don't manage, but they work with our group. <coughs> we sat down and we actually did a value stream mapping for our research. So from the standpoint of where the researcher creates it all the way until it is in its absolute finished product, we sat down and we did a, a value stream map and, a, and then turned that into a swim lane map. And there were so many people that said, I've never worked with this type of a, a map before, but this was amazing. This opened my eyes to what everyone else did upstream and downstream of me. You know, I never thought about what they did, but here's everything they have to consider. And it just highlighted how much confusion there was about who was doing what, because we are a startup. And you know, the, that's one of the battles that I fight all the time every day is documenting processes and then trying to standardize them as much as possible. It, we have four different research groups that are all focusing on different things and we all do everything different. <laughs> so yeah. for these editors that have to work with all the different groups and then further on down the line, production and creative that have to work with all the different groups because we all do it differently causes them so many headaches, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. But by using that one tool, by involving everyone, of course, as you know, in the process of building that uh, value stream map and the swim lane map, it, I, I've had so many people follow up with me and just say, hey, where can I learn more about this? Or, hey, I'm really interested in this now. Yeah. Um, and it just like you, you kind of nudge that learning journey for them. Yeah, excellent. So I want to um, encourage the, the students to ask questions. Um, if you've got a question, you're online, please please type in the chat, but we'll ask you to, to pop on so we get some more voices besides from just Rachel and I. We could uh, we could talk about this stuff all day. We want to get some other people involved too. So um, yeah, so I got a question in the back of the room. I'm going to I'm going to ask you to go ahead and speak up. I'm going to try to do my my cameraman thing without um, things sort of rolling off here. All right, let's try that. Okay. Hi, Rachel. Uh, my name is Brendan. I was just curious to kind of learn a little bit more actually about the company specifically. Um, last year when I was working like in the high tech software space, I definitely didn't notice and worked with a ton of like companies in the ed tech industry and like, how fast growing the industry that is. I just kind of wanted to learn a little more about what you guys do specifically and like how, I guess more or less like a high, kind of like a general high level overview of like how lean kind of plays a part in your like day to day operations. Definitely. Um, so the the extent of what I can say, <coughs> excuse me, the extent of what I can say is that we are looking at filling the gap between students and counselors uh, in a variety of different topics to help students prepare uh, for high school and after high school. And I can't say any more outside of that, but uh, August 10th, I believe, is our launch. So. Um, Look for look for North Canyon Media uh, after August tenth. <laughs> but in terms of how in terms of how we're looking at Lean or how I'm looking at Lean within my responsibilities in my group, we are basically producing content. <coughs> Excuse me. We produce research, we write the research, and then we fluff it up into content basically and so in order for us to be able to produce enough content to satisfy my ceo and have enough of a product to be able to share with investors and uh, potential customers 
we have a goal that we have to meet in terms of the number of completed uh, careers per week. And so in order, the, the way that I fuse, infuse lean with that is, again, just looking at every step along the way. Where are my bottlenecks? Um, I've actually been a bottleneck <laughs> because there's only one of me and there's all of this material moving through. Uh, so looking at and recognizing those bottlenecks, where is a review of it appropriate? Where is it appropriate for writers to do the work? Where is it appropriate for editors to do the work? What do we have to have in order for it to be able to be uh, handed off to creative and actually form this into content? And where where are those where are those places along our quote unquote production line that we can uh, improve the quality, reduce the variability, you know, and make the whole process go faster? Because I mean, we we have to we have to gotta be careful here we have to you know create a certain amount <clears throat> um i you know i've made a commitment of what i consider my amount of finished content would be for a critical mass for my area and so i've got to be able to make our production meet that critical mass on my timeline and so looking at where we can streamline the process where we can cut out waste where we can cut out redundancy that's my focus on how i'm infusing lean into my processes that sounds like a real useful way to look at things and i know like you know as far as you know validation for maybe what it sounds like your, your company's objective and work is i just spent um, a few days with a bunch of industrial engineers which had a real hard time trying to explain to the next generation what exactly they do and what that career is mm -hmm. um so uh, so there's definitely sort of a need and certainly like industrial technology, which is what I teach here, we have a real hard time with that too. So maybe maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll have some time to work together at some point in the future. Yeah, we, got, we, got, we got another question over here. I'm gonna go ahead and walk the camera over here. Hang on a second. Okay. All right. So here we go. We got the back row is really active today. Hi, how are you? So uh, I'm Adam. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about the content creation as it relates to lean because I've, I've done a lot of that. And I realize like writing an article sometimes it doesn't just come like you get writer's block and stuff like that. So is it is it uh are you kind of thinking about tag time when people are writing and stuff like that kind of an analytical part of lean or is it more about um the time outside of the content writing that you're trying to add efficiency in? Both both um because not only is it the time you know, after it's written, but it's also the time that it takes to get it written. And that's a byproduct of the quality of the research that we have going into it, which is a byproduct of the quality of the researcher and the outline of the research needed that I, that is created. So it's it's everything. I mean, that's the blessing and the curse of working at a startup is that you're I mean you're building it from scratch. <clears throat> so one of the things that I've had trouble with, even even with doing some of these swim lane exercises, is <coughs> excuse me, really mapping out those handoffs, you know, the time in between the uptime, the downtime, um, really trying to put the numbers behind it, put the analytics behind it. Because, you know, when we started out, I was tracking things in Excel sheets. And how easy is it really to, you know, look and see when someone's work, working in a Google Doc and get that track of, okay, they started working on it here, they finished working on it here, it sat for this amount of time until the editor um the editor was able to get to it so that documentation to provide the analysis behind you know after the fact it has been incredibly hard from the beginning now we're transitioning to um i don't know if you've ever worked with with it before but it's monday.com and it, it is a, a production management type tool or a productivity type tracking tool and so my hope as <coughs> excuse me the manager is that because we're now going to have everything centered in one system, I will have that tracking so that I can more accurately say, okay, well, writer A is taking, you know, four hours to write their assigned articles. Writer B is taking six hours to write their assigned articles, you know, and, and of course, assuming that they're the same articles across the board, um, you know, that will actually give me the data to be able to make better assumptions and better understandings of all the different phases. So, so yes, it's, we're looking at everything at this point. <laughs> so I have a good, good question. I guess, Rachel, so one of the things I've always believed about, you know, lean organizations is that they set targets, right? 
-hmm. and, and the nice thing about a target is you know, it, it's, it's, it's a point and you can either hit the target, beat the target, or you, know, you exceed the target, right? So, yep. so do you do things like, I, I, I hear about you creating sort of the database of information so you'll sort of know, you know what the typicals are or the max mins, but then are, are you setting targets for folks to, to sort of hit and there's like milestones and, and, and that sort of thing? And is, is that something you're tracking too? Yes, ev eventually, because we will not only have our overall target excuse me, as a as a research group of three finished products per week, three finished careers per week, <coughs> we're going to have targets for each of our writers in terms of, okay, well, you need to have X many articles written from this material. Uh, our researchers, our research goal is to have two weeks, to take two weeks full time, you know, 40 hours a week to create one research product. We're not there right now because I'll be honest, the writers or the, the researchers <clears throat> do a pretty good job of completing their first draft in about a week and a half to two weeks. After that, either I've got to review it or I have one of only two editors right now who are editing all sorts of other content who need to review it and give feedback to that writer or to that researcher. So we're we're struggling, you know, we're struggling with numbers and growing and trying to trying to meet this production goal with not a lot of people, which is your typical startup situation. Uh, but yes, eventually is the goal that eventually my goal is that there will be a goal <laughs> and a production, you know, quota or a production goal for each person in each role with that time frame. Oh, interesting. Okay, good. Other other questions from folks. You know, you know, it's. I think Rachel, it's really sort of interesting to you know see, you know, lean applied in sort of a creative process, right? And and whether you're, um, you're you know, doing the kind of things you're doing, or people are making movies, or writing books, or or, or whatever that might be, that that these same sort of things do apply, especially if there's you know repetitiveness in this. Let's see. So Toby, Toby has a question. Let me go ahead and walk the camera over here. Really? And, and, and while you're getting to the question, I think that's the best thing about Lean Six Sigma is you can literally apply it to every industry, every business, every process. You just sometimes have to be more creative about it. Yeah, building off that a little bit, what kind or like what kinds of transformations or odd ways of applying Lean concepts have you like had to undertake to apply it in a creative way instead of a manufacturing process? Like what kinds of do you have any examples of like yeah, using these tools in a different way, creative way? Oh, let me think about that. That's a good question. Um, creative application of tools. Well, well let's see, Rachel. So as you um, as you sort of think about it, I, I think there's you know one of the fun things for me has always been, you know, I know the manufacturing way these tools and things are applied. How is it like? You know this 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 weird process and things and what things can i sort of take in and um i think i think if i had to you know constantly apply lean just in the manufacturing environment i'd be a little bit bored right um yeah but uh yeah. you know, trying trying to you know take a thing like number of products per week and that sort of defines maybe attack time for you and you're trying to get people to you know work the tack time but you don't want to tell them that because people rebel, right, on, 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 on some of those hard numbers. And that's why I was asking about, you know, the target, you know, sort of thing, right? That, that can be a, that can be a creativity killer too, right? Definitely. And, and that's a great point. If people know that you're measuring them, they could punch the numbers, they could try and cut corners, you know, so, so hand in hand in hand with anything that you apply, and maybe this is part of the creative process is the culture shift and the message that you send to the people that are working in your processes. Because if you have, let's say you, you're working in a punitive culture where if you don't meet that three, you know, you're gone, you're out of there, you're cut. Whereas if it's us from a standpoint of this is our goal, we want to meet that goal, but we want to meet it right, you know, right. You know, we want to have a, a quality product on time that's correct, that meets the needs of our user, <clears throat> excuse me. And so if you approach the, the culture and the culture building from that perspective and you start to build that trust and that 
positive relationship with the individuals working in the process. You know, that that is just as essential of a building block as the measurement and the actual tools and the software or whatever you're using to make those measurements. Right. Um, <clears throat> I would I would say I've, I'm thinking in terms of a creative application. And there was one there was one project actually that I worked on at the county. <coughs> Excuse me. And we were looking at what we were what were we looking at? We were looking at um, public records requests. And so public records requests are any time that a citizen, uh, a individual person makes a request to get information from the county. And it can be anything from policy information to emails relating to a particular topic. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, it, could, it could be across the board, any sort of documentation, pictures, I mean, things like that. And so what we were starting to look at is standardizing the process that every agency uses to intake process and fulfill um, those public records requests because of course governments have to because of the brown act and because of the public records act they have to comply with them there are very specific timelines that they have to comply within uh, otherwise you know there there are penalties for it and so we were looking at the process of you know, how do we standardize that from a, an agency like uh, uh, RMA, Resource Management Agency, <laughs> so permitting and land use, you know, how do we standardize that compared to the sheriff's office and the probation agency and requesting documents and, and things like that? How do you triage what is acceptable under a public records request and what is not? How do you triage with an email if it just has a general mention of this of this topic or if it's you know a clear cut email that is focused on it? And then also email retention. We had some agencies that had every email back as far as they could ever have recorded. And then we had other agencies that had, I think it was like a week or no, two weeks or a month time frame where unless they archived it, the email was gone. And so that was definitely, um, I, I left before we were able to finish it, but that was definitely one where you, in order to figure out something that was going to be standard across all these different agencies and all these different processes, um, how would we creatively build that, sell it to the agency heads, get their buy-in, and then get all the employees to follow it, <laughs> so. And, and that was like, you know, trying to get you know standard work across multiple you know agencies that were doing things well rachel um so i've, I've got sort of a new target i know you've been a long time celebrity interview guest um and uh what i found is you know you know my, me and my guests can can geek out well beyond the the tolerance of the student level so i've been shooting for 30 minutes and i think we're right about that time now at this point so i'm going to ask my final question to wrap things up so rachel if you've got one piece of advice to give a bunch of aspiring, you know, lean Six Sigma folks heading out into the business world. Uh, what what piece of advice would that be? Always look for a new tool or a new a new methodology. <clears throat> so I started out lean Six Sigma. I have been able to also experience agile, uh, waterfall type approaches. Um, there's something new actually that I learned just a couple months ago going to the, the lean coffee with Dr. Olson. It's called the three P's production preparation process. Oh, okay. And it's like a shortened, it's a shortened process improvement methodology, but it seems to work a lot better with startups, you know, where you don't have some of that historical data or that historical process. Yeah. You're building more processes on the fly. So I would say don't ever think you know all the tools. Don't ever think that your methodology that you've practiced is the only way or you know, is is the quote unquote right way for whatever you're doing. Right. Always look at what else is out there. And especially when you're in an organization that has that history, like at Lexmark, they used a lot of agile practices. I had to learn agile. Um, and Oh, I can't remember what it was, but there was one that was, it was like agile, but it was technology focused. And so I had to go through the certifications. I can't even remember what it was. That's a little bad to admit, but, <laughs> um, but adapt to what they have and then also infuse what you've already used, what your practice and what you're comfortable with into that. So, so always try and learn something more. All right, Rachel, great, great advice. And I think we've all learned a little bit from 
uh, talking to you once again. So nice to nice to stay in touch, and I look forward to talking to you in a, in a future session. I'm going to ask the the folks that are online um, to go ahead and give us a little wave. Uh, I'm going to turn on the gallery view so I can see everybody's face. Go ahead and pop on your camera. Give uh, Rachel a nice little wave, and, and this is a a wave from the people in the class here. So I'll kind of give it here. They are there. Awesome. They're waving. And you can see there. And if you all want to reach out through LinkedIn or anything like that, if you want to connect, um, I'm linked to Dr. Olson, so you can find him that way. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or share share anything that I can with you guys. All right, Rachel. All right, thank you very much, and we'll uh, we'll definitely be in touch. We'll talk about some how to finish some black belt projects so we get you certified, yes. right? Please, I got to get that finished. <laughs> it's been a while. All right, so we'll talk to you later. Take care, Rachel.